This is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Alma, Texas. This is December the 7th, 2022. This is our midweek prayer and praise uh, service, which is the first Wednesday of every week uh, that we come together. Where we lift up songs and we have prayers and we read scriptures to glorify the Lord. We have a message of encouragement. And so we will begin uh, in the book of Psalms. If you go there with me. And we will look at Psalms 109th Division. Forgive me, 119th Division. And we will begin at uh, verse number 1. Psalm 119 and verse 1. Blessed are the only father in the way who walk in the way of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and they that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. All that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then I shall not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will keep thy statutes, or forsake me not utterly. Wherewith all shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. In my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all thy judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all Church, all riches, forgive me. I will meditate on our precepts and I respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. May the Lord have a choice blessing to the readers, to the hearers, and to the doers of his word. Let us get our hearts and minds prepared together that we will be able to Pray unto the Most High God and bring blessings unto all our lives. Let us pray. Father God, the Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for whom we have access to eternal life. Dear Father God, we are forever grateful for your mercy, tender mercies of grace and riches of glory. Father God, we are so grateful you have given us the opportunity to sing songs, to read scriptures, and to be able to pray unto you. We also, Father, are grateful that we will have a message of encouragement to cause us to glorify thy name even more. Yes. Father God, we're so grateful for the opportunity that is before us, whereby a promise exceeding and riches great. Past that, Lord, which is hard for our minds to see, according to your servant Peter. Father, we know it to be true. We've seen transformation in our lives. We pray that for other saints. We pray for the leadership here and all around the world. We remember our calling, Lord, and our election, making it sure. Understanding no matter what we see before our eyes and hear with our ears, your word will still override. It will be the only thing that the judgment used to examine us. Father, that's what your son lived by. All your faithful servants, they lived by it. And Father God, it is the thing that is the very fibers of you. So therefore, we cannot go wrong in putting our faith in your word. Dear Father, we ask you to continue to give us good help, physically and spiritually. Help us to have a zeal, Lord, that will cause us to rise up and go into battle against that which is evil and rejoice in that which is good. Father God, we ask you to continue to help us throughout our service this night. We pray that things that will be said will be pleasing and acceptable in your holy and divine eyesight. These many blessings we ask in your Son, Jesus Christ, holy and righteous name. Amen. Amen. If you have your song books, uh, let us uh, get ready uh, to turn to one of our old-time favorite hymns. That will cause us to uplift the name of the Lord God Almighty in our heart and our spirit. If you have Song 6 2, Song 6 2. I 
Hold on, that's not the one I want. Got the right title, but it's not the one that I want. So let's get another one. Let's get 52. 52. Jesus, hold my hand. And that's what we need. If you haven't, let us sing. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safely through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. This would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day to help me do the best I can. For I need thy light to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour. Through this land, this pilgrim land. By thy saving power. Hear my plea, my feeble plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me. When I kneel in prayer, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine that I may see the blessed way. Keep me that I may be holy, thine and sing redemption song someday. I will be a soldier brave and true and ever firmly take a stand. As I onward go and daily meet the foe, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour through this land, this pilgrim land. By thy saving power, hear my plea, my feeble plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. When I wander through the valley, dim to all the setting of the sun. Lead me safely to a land of breasted fire, crown of life have won. I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach the golden strand. There's no other friend on whom I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes, I need thee every hour through this land, this pilgrim land, by thy saving power. Hear my plea, my feeble plea. Lord, dear Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Amen. Good evening, church. Good evening. Sisters, good evening. Good evening. Try to get this going here. Amen. Okay. <coughs> All right, Psalm six. <coughs> Psalm six. And it reads, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak, O Lord. Heal me, for my house are vexed. 
My soul is also sore vexed with thou, O Lord, how long? Return, O Lord, deliver my soul. Save me from thy mercy's sake. For in death there is no remembrance of thee in the grave. Who shall give thee thanks? I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. My eyes is consumed because of grief. It waxed old because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all ye wonders of iniquity. For the Lord had heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord had heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Y'all please bow for prayer, please. Dear beloved Father, we come to you, Lord. Thanking you, Lord, for the things you have done for us, letting us see this day. Lord, we come to you, Lord, thanking you on behalf of, um, of the knowledge that you have put in this book for us to, to walk this walk. Yes. And also, you put the word in the book, Lord, for us to, to uh, read it and to also apply it to everyday life. And you also, Lord, put it in the book for us to be obedient to your word, Lord. Yes. But Lord, we come to you, Lord, this day and also this evening, Lord, thank you for the wisdom and also the knowledge that you have prepared our minds to comprehend to your word. Yes. We come to you, Lord, this day, Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you spat upon our souls because we know that, that you have given us the, the, uh, the time to be here because we know that we are all here today on spending time. But, Lord, we come to you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Yes. Letting us get out, get up to see another day. And also, you put work in our hands, Lord, so that we can provide for, for others, for our family, and also for others and for your kingdom. But, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to be with those who are swayed away from the church, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to bring them back before it's everlasting, too late for their souls. We also, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to protect them, Lord, from any hurt, harm, and danger, Lord, before it's everlasting, too late. Yes. But we come to you, Lord, at this time, Lord, for the bereavement at this time. We we um we just thank you, Lord, for for healing our minds, Lord, uh, for the loved ones that actually have left us and and went on, moved on. So we just ask you, Lord, to be with us all, Lord, and also guide us and lead us in the way we ought to be led, Lord, because we know we're all here and the next day we're gone. We're only here part-time. We're not here full-time, Lord. We just know that we try to live the best life that we could on this earth that you've given us, Lord, and at peace. But, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to bless America and also bless those of the Christians that's in the true faith of, of your, your church. We just ask you, Lord, to, to protect them from any hurt, harm, any danger. We also, Lord, thank you for the prosperity that you have given us, Lord. Yes. To prosper on this earth, Lord, for food and for, for shelter over our heads. Mm -hmm. And also for the things you also put in our life, put the people that you have put in our lives, Lord, to prosper. But we come to you, Lord, at this time, um, praying for all of us in here and also at the we're also at the church, uh, JFK Church, Lord. I mean, we're Clayton Church of Christ. We just ask you, Lord, to, to be with all of us here that resides here. And we just ask you, Lord, to, to also give us the, the knowledge to comprehend to your word. Yes. And, and never leave your word, Lord. But at this time, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to, to, to give us strength and give us also our daily bread. And we also ask you, Lord, to please forgive us for anything we have done. Mm -hmm. We just ask you, Lord, to please forgive us for anything that we have offended people. Mm -hmm. And we also um, 
ask you, Lord, to give us mercy as we speak, Lord, at this time, present time. In Jesus' name, we do all pray. Amen. Amen. Would y'all please turn your Bibles, I mean, your hymns to 404. 404. All right, again, it's 404. Heavenly sunlight. Amen. Let's sing. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain through the deep veil, Jesus has said, I never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooded my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine. Shadows around me, shadows above me, never concealed my Savior and God. He is the light in him, there's no darkness, ever I'm walking. Close to his side, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooded my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine in the bright sunlight. Ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight above, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, loving my soul with Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises, Jesus is mine, amen, God bless you all, I want to thank Brother William, uh, great job in leading us uh, in prayers and songs and scriptures uh, that we have been a part of, we want to get our minds focused now for a particular uh, lesson. It is, how do blessings and cursings work today? How do blessings and cursings work today? Now, we look at Galatians chapter 1. I'm going to begin at uh, verse number 1. And we will see here a snip uh, of what the Lord will have us to understand. Paul and apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, raised from the dead. And all the brethren that are uh, brother brethren which are with me unto the church of Galatia. Grace be to you. Peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now he's going to go into an area now where he's going to show a distastefulness for their performance. He says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there will be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, it is not another gospel. So you have to take the gospel and pervert it to bring something about Christ and something different. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be a curse. So Paul is mentioning anyone, themselves or an angel. Uh, we know there are demons that came from him, but also Paul is saying it doesn't matter, you know, where they came from. 
if they teach different, let him be cursed. This word of curse, uh, we understand cursings and such like. But what we want to do is sometimes look at a word to show the ugliness of it. This one's very ugly. Uh, accursed, the word that uh, G, this is Strong's number system. Number and lettering system, G331, G for Greek, 331, because there's a 331 in Hebrew. That's why there's a G here. A religious band, concretely excommunicated. Thing of person, a curse, anathema. Now, when someone looks at this, we have to understand there's no hope for your soul. We have a big issue that we got to deal with concerning man and understanding why we teach like we do. This soul is cursed to damnation. This isn't some drawing back of money, goods and services. The soul will be prevented. A religious ban. And this religious ban is not because of the saints proclaiming it. The religious ban is because God has said he's cursed because he brings forth a different gospel, one that is perverted, like that gospel of Barnabas we talked about and uh, Sunday. So why is this important? Well, because the subject is dealing with blessings and curses. How do they work today? And so looking at Galatians 1, 9, going into verse 9, as we said before. So say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel that you have received, let him be a curse. So now he shows the reasoning behind there's no success to do this. So why would he? He's going to start explaining that his isn't different either. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? If I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So here now, if, if you do want to alter the gospel to please men, then now you're no longer the servant of Christ in addition to being cursed. So you got two strikes here. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which I preach, which was preached to me, forgive me, is not after man. Verse 11. What does he mean, not after man? He's saying what he said before. I didn't get it from a man. It isn't man's configuration. And I didn't configure it myself. And he's going to explain where he got it. If I neither received it of man. Neither was I taught it. But by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now all the time Paul has heard the repeat. Of the word of God. How Christianity is awake. But Paul is saying. I've been personally taught by Christ. Now that's going to happen for you and me also. When we read what he wrote. This is important, brethren, for you and I to understand the gospel doesn't come from human beings. It comes from God. What Peter had, he knew he got it from God. So when they meet each other, in Galatians 2, Paul talks about it, they discuss. And the others that are there, they go, yeah, 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 you with it. You talk to him. You talk to Jesus personally. Yeah, that's what it is. That's, we, we see the connection of how you're putting things together. So you and I, to do that, we must read. Now, it's a simple task, brethren. We can't wait for Jesus to come and meet with us because he's not going to do that. So you read lines, you read line, line upon line, precept upon precept, same subject matter, revelation, talking about kings and priests, does not make us little kings and priests. Also, revelation, talk about that was seven churches, that was seven little churches, and the scheme of those churches matched some churches today. So, we read that. That's all you got to do is read it. There are some historical things that may become very confusing, trying to match previous battles. Understood. You can be wrong on those. You can be wrong on who the Lord was talking to here. It's understood. The gospel, not understood. The gospel, not accepted. I may get something wrong from numbers, but I should not be getting anything wrong from the gospel, brethren. See, because that's different. Although it will not promote truth by getting something wrong in numbers, the blunt and the blow have better not be doctrinal by you getting something wrong in numbers because it's going to affect the gospel that you're teaching today, brother Will.
All right. Um, yeah, you know what? You know what? 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 What trips me out is that when it comes to the Bible, you know, you know, a lot of people don't believe in the Bible, mm -hmm. but you know that when you really, when you really dig deep and down in, in, into the soul, mm -hmm. you like, why? Why people can't understand the Bible? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why they can't understand it? They can understand when you go to the Baptist or Pentecostal or Catholic. Mm -hmm. Or this man-made, whatever you call this Israelite stuff, whatever you call them, it's like, it's like, wow, you you have to be open-minded person. Amen. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people are not open-minded, mm -hmm. but you got a lot of people in Church of Christ not open-minded. Amen. You know what I'm saying? I can't just say for them, but you know, a lot of people in Church of Christ are not open-minded. But it's like when you have an open mind about everything, you can understand. He be like, "Wow, it's right. It's, it's actually right in it's right in your face, mm -hmm. but you're not comprehending. But when you go to college and stuff, they the professors read to you, you can understand the mm -hmm. the comprehension in the in the textbooks of of your profession. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the Bible, it's like I can't understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you 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 have to open your mind. I think once once you understand." And sometimes, sometimes you do got to let your guards down and read and understand it, so you can get a better outlook. You got a lot of people in the church still don't understand it. Yes. They think it's a game. Mm -hmm. You know, they in the church. They go by the root. It's like this. It's like with Church of Christ people. It's like with us. It's like we're in here, mm -hmm. but we're not. It's like we. St you ever, you, ever, you, ever, you ever draw a line or you put a ruler, left foot on this side and right foot on this side? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You straight down and it's like you half and half. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So to me, it's like, why we can't, why we can't understand this? I mean, it's so hard to, it's not, it's, it's not really, it's not really hard, mm -hmm. but people make it hard. Yes. They just like with life, we make it hard on ourselves. Yes. Then we tend to blame God for everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so it's like this. We, 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 how can I say, when you go to the Baptists and, and put, they always try to justify things and show you, and you be like, dude, I said, that's not what it says. <laughs> Why are you saying it? Just like when it came to Mark, it was Mark uh, said about being, uh, what was it, Mark chapter 5, was it chapter 5, I think? About being baptized with Mark 16. Mark, yeah, 16 mm -hmm. and 15. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Romans, it, it, it tells you all the church of Christ. And when you try to tell people, you got to tell them is that, okay, church died. For, it, and this is simple. Mm -hmm. Church, Christ died for us, right? Exactly. So, what name should it be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yes, sir. The churches of Christ. Yes. Nobody else died for you but Christ. Mm -hmm. So why are you putting all these names on these churches? Mm -hmm. It's just plain and simple. Exactly. And just like when a when a baby would a baby know when a baby walks up to a toy and had a little donuts mm -hmm. and you have a stick, mm -hmm. the comprehension say, okay, I got a hole. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put it on the mm -hmm. stick. And the baby gets the gets the donut, mm -hmm. and boom, and looks at you and laugh. Mm -hmm. Common sense, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what life life is just common sense. Mm -hmm. If we just read it, comprehend to us, and do what it says, mm -hmm. everything goes smooth. But you always got to have these all these different religions. It's only one religion, mm -hmm. so that goes to show you. It goes to show you in your mind. You like you know what they got all these different religions. It's only one. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do, when it comes to research, you study the Bible, show the approval, you go to all these people, you read. Mm -hmm. If it don't amount up, it's like, okay, you're not the one. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. You're not the one. Exactly. You go to mother, you're not the one. Mm -hmm. But when you come into the church, it's like, well, everything lines up. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly. It's just like when you, when you go get a certificate for, for your job. Mm -hmm. Everything lines up. It's like you go to Burger King, you don't ask them for for uh, uh, for for Big Mac. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> Everything has to line up. You say, okay. Mm -hmm. 
it, it, the instructions is right in your face. Exactly. Well said, William. Mm. Well, you know why you believe that? Because you're a believer. Mm. One of the components necessary for the simplicity of Christ mentioned in 2 Corinthians 11 is I must believe him. Childlike faith. As Paul said, be a fool for him. He said, go to that door, go to the door. And when I do read some of his writings, they conflict with my personal belief system. So you can read it to me all day, and I'm going to read it too, but I'm going to say that's not what he's saying because he's conflicted with my personal belief, my, either my moral life or uh, the benefit that brings me certain things from what I've said is be, a benefit there. Uh, even if I'm just a commoner, in, I'm one of the many members. People love me when I say X, Y, Z. They don't like me when I say ABC. So I don't get invited to homes. I don't have uh, a lot of friends. Uh, even my family is against me. And so the problem is, is that it conflicts. And so you can keep going back over and I go, well, what about? Because I'm looking for a way to put my square inside your so-called round hole. To make you feel good. Yes, to because it makes me, out. yes. It's just like exactly. It's attention to make us feel good. Yeah, everybody loves it me. Makes, it, Men's saying. admiration. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I said. It's it, it, it really, it, it's really to the point where you, you don't have to argue with nobody when it comes to the word. Mm -hmm. You pinpoint the scripture, mm -hmm. just like when it comes to the paying the tithes. Yes. Well, you know, right. did, I said, okay, this discussion not going to go no further mm -hmm. because where's your Levi priest? Where I Levi priest, you have nothing. That's nothing. It's nothing. He has nothing. So why exactly. should I argue with you about paying tithes? And 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 and, and you saying you and you saying uh uh, uh you got to pay your tithes now. Mm -hmm. I said the new scripture doesn't say anything about paying tithes. He doesn't ever he bring doesn't any corn like, like Henry said. said. But like yeah, he said, he doesn't bring I mean, any corn. It, it, it's so simple. No wheat. Yeah, no wheat. So I said, why, why bring over tithes when we have everything else that we have to do? Uh -huh. Sacrifice animals. Uh -huh. and then you don't have no pinpoint to where. You, you don't have no no uh, what you call it uh got the name of the word, but you have no proof. Yeah, you have proof in the Old Testament. Yes, but there's no proof in the New Testament. So exactly. where do you get it? Where we have to pay ten percent of tithes, mm -hmm. and we don't have a Levite priest. So can you, like you said in the scripture, taste not, touch not. Yeah, don't touch the Old Testament. That's for our school. Mm. Why would you bring it over here when it's, we, we become a new creature in Christ? Mm -hmm. Why would you bring everything else over? You're contradicting yourself. Hey Amen. Because he's eating all the pork he can get in his hands. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But see, what that on what about Shrimp. You got to yeah. remember Jesus was still living. Yeah. Exactly. So it's just common sense. No, brother, you're saying it right because you're talking about spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 2. You have that because faith. You, you believe. And so now you're like, oh, man, how can he not see it? Because he's accursed. See, by him bringing that twisted doctrine, well, then the Lord says through Paul, he's accursed. He's if he came from heaven and he's an angel, he's accursed. He's he has been banned from Christianity. Mm -hmm. He is excommunicated. And guess who put him out? Christ. And see, and so sometimes people use this, you know, with a church excommunicate. Listen. Paul says he is. See, listen to how he says it in uh, verse 8. He says, but though we are an angel from heaven. Now, you know what's hard about a guy like this? If he finds out he blew it in the gospel, the gospel come back to Galatia, he'll never get them. Because he already said, if I come back and change it, you can't listen to me. You can only say stuff like this when you're 100% right. You just, you can't change it. So he says, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Let him be a curse. See, this is what he is. To you, he's a curse. Oh, that's why I bring the God. He's a curse. And so he says, uh, as we go down, uh, notice the verse 9, as we said before, so said, now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that you have received. See, that's key too. What did, we, what did we bring you? Let him be a curse. For do I not persuade men of God, or do I not seek to please men? For I yet 
please men, I should not be served on Christ. He says, so now he certifies the gospel which was preached to me is not of the man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, this isn't him reading a Bible, getting revealed. No, the revelation of Jesus Christ. He has been taught this by Christ. For you have heard of my conversation time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and propped in the Jews' religion, above many mine equal, my equals in mine own nation, being more zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Now notice this word, tradition of my fathers. Peter's going to write, you're not saved by the traditions of your fathers. You're not saved by Judaism anymore. But when it pleased God, who separated me from a mother's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned to Damascus. Then after three years I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him fifteen days. But other the apostles saw none save James the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you before, before, I, before God, I lie not. Now we know that's just his word, but he's telling you, right, I lie not. After I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and was known by facing of the churches of Judea, which were in Christ, but they heard only that he which persecuted us in times past, and I preached the faith which once he destroyed, they glorified God in me. And so now we understand this, is that who revealed this to him? Well, let's go to Ephesians and see. He said it wasn't flesh and blood. He didn't refer to any man. He didn't, deal with Peter, didn't hook up with Peter to learn this. He, said he wasn't personally taught by the apostles, and that's why he's an apostle. No. Ephesians 3 and 1. He says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four and few words. If that's just reading the Bible, oh, Paul, big whoop, we all get that. That's not just reading the Bible. He's going to explain how you're going to get it, and I'm going to get it, and Ephesians are going to get it by reading the Bible. His is revealed, he says, by him, which is Jesus Christ. Well, by when you read, you may have my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So see, there's your separation. It's revealed by Jesus Christ. Because you, when you look at this, you just think, well, Paul went to Damascus three years, kind of meditated to himself, and kind of prayed and hummed, held his fingers together, and concocted this thing. You know, kind of like Buddha. No, he did not. He said that Jesus revealed it unto him. Now remember that. But when you read, you may have my understanding and the knowledge and the mystery of Christ. So he's showing it different. You've got to read it. He revealed it to me. There's a statement. You got to read it. He revealed it to me. Made it known unto me. That's critical in understanding when he says, I didn't get it from a man. Why did Christ choose that? Because he had to let the other 12 know, hey, this guy is in a different season. He's been with me three years. Because I've taught him. I've met with him. And let him tell you, and you're going to know he's been with me. Brother Will. All right, bro. Good, good Bible study. Praise the Lord. Uh, too, oh, yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, God bless you. Uh, you know we've been deceived for so long. Yes. And we, we all, some people, we're actually today still being deceived. So... When you look back in the days when slavery days was was uh, a sixteen, I mean seventeen, eighteen centuries, mm -hmm. uh, you look you look at it to the point where the churches back then uh, they had so pretty much say white Jesus, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. So so it carried on till I was you know when I was young. I thought Jesus was you know white, blue mm -hmm. eyes. So we've all been to see. I know it back. I know back then y'all thought Jesus was white with blue eyes, right? <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so that's what I say. When you come to being deceived by another gospel, yes. they had actually put in and put into our mindset to where he was 
white and blue eyes. Mm -hmm. But see, when you go, like you said, when you go here, what was it? Uh, what scripture was that? It was scripture you just pointed out. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Lord, what was it? Was it not? Was it a feast? Not a feast, was it Galatians mm -hmm. that we just came back from? Let me see so now. Galatians 1. I think it was Galatians 1, I believe. Okay, I think this is it right here. It says, as we have said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel to you, mm -hmm. that you be able to receive that, let him be a curse. For do I know persuade men of God, I do, or do I seek to please men? For if yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Mm -hmm. We said, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, you know, for I, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And for ye have heard of all my conversation in time and past, okay. But it's like this, we're being deceived on a lot of things when it comes to different religions. Yeah. Like, uh, far off uh, by him being white with blue eyes. Uh -huh. And, and like you said, when it comes to reading that sort of self approval, we seen in the Bible, but we didn't take heed to it mm -hmm. because we were still calling him white Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was in the Bible, just like you said, it was in the Bible, biggest day. Mm -hmm. So when we understand is that why why should we say he's white with blue eyes when it didn't it happened where you know us type of color of people, you know what I'm saying? And that's what we didn't think about. We didn't think about that. You know what I'm saying? Our, our mindset really wasn't like uh, as far as like uh, broadened to think that way. Just like now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because when I was young, that's what I thought. My my mother thought the same way because we didn't read. And that's when you go into these churches. When I used to go into these churches, and they had white Jesus with blue eyes. They had pictures on the wall with white angels. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we didn't think of it. So that's why I say when 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 they get up and they, they deceive a lot of people and we don't read and we fall short of glory because guess what? It's in the Bible. Now if we still read the Bible, you know what I'm saying, and open our minds, we can say, okay, why do we have these pictures on the wall of white with blue eyes when really Jesus didn't originate where a lot of white people was at? You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Now let's Internet before we close out, God bless you, William, for bringing forth the thought of deception. I don't know what color Jesus' skin was. There's, there's a lot of white people in Houston. It's very hot here. And I don't see them getting darker. I just don't. And their eyes are beautiful blue. Yeah. So I don't see them getting darker just because they're in the sun. It's a very hot region here. This is hotter than even Dallas and other places on a consistent level. Yeah. So I don't know if his eyes were blue and his skin was as creamy white as a light. I don't know. Uh, I do know there's a lot of white Jews in Jerusalem in some of the very areas he walked in as white as milk skin. And I'm pretty sure we could find at least one blue eyed one there if we looked hard enough, possibly. But that's the picture that they painted him. Right, and I understand you know that. Saying? I understand. So but see, really yeah. Right. No. And so that's a good point. And so I don't know what color his skin was or what color his eyes are. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that regardless of if you made him brown skin mm -hmm. with black or brown eyes, mm -hmm or made him as black as shoes, he would have to have looked like all the Jews there because Isaiah writes some very unusual statements about that was nothing that drew you to look at him. Now, if you got a region where everybody is very light brown skin or brown skin with black eyes or brown eyes, what have you, a guy that's as dark as my shoes, he's going to stick out. And he's, he's got to stick out. He's too dark than everybody else. He's the only guy around there. And he's doing miracles too. And he's just darker than anybody. So he's going to look like everybody looked in. And my thought based on Isaiah is nothing was different about him. You know, his hair was bushy. Bushy like wool. You know, it's, and so I think we're not going to be able to swing it either way. Uh, you know, I mean, I... If I went somewhere and somebody had a picture of a guy brown skinned, dark skinned, 
I mean, I saw it in the building. I wouldn't say anything about the light or the dark if he had eyes like an Asian. I wouldn't say that because it's just a picture that got, you know, up there. But, you know, you can't say it either way because I don't know what he looked like. I really don't, you know. But I know he would have had to look like the general populace to not stand out. That's different. Some say he's an Ethiopian. That's a lie because Ethiopians and Jews are not the same. See, that's, see, those are what you call blatant lies. So, you know, he couldn't have come among his own because his own weren't Ethiopians. See, this, and this is why you have to cut this. As you said, the good point, it was fed a lie, but in the sense of they wanted to promote a specific right. But people. I don't still know and neither you what he looked and, like. And, and you know? that's what I'm saying. But yeah. you're right. But, like I said, as, but as you read it, tells you don't really, don't really tell you what he looked like. But that's what I'm saying. That's why people were being, being so deceived of it to the point to where they should have went up to the preacher and said, hey, why do you got these pictures up for some that really shouldn't even be up there? Well, the problem with it is, with him is the text itself will not denote his skin mm -hmm. color. Mm -hmm. Have texture as a human, not as what we see in Revelation. It will not denote any of those. Mm -hmm. So you won't be able to just read it and see, but yeah, you will yeah. be able to read and see, okay, he mm -hmm. looked like mm -hmm. general Jewish populace. Mm -hmm. You know, it would have been very odd for Jesus to come out jet black, mm -hmm. you know, like I've got relatives, and Joseph and Mary. Sallow. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be hard. Boy, that's a hard kind of a deal here. We got this baby. And, and, and you you know. right about that. They, they, but the scripture was talking about what well, a lot of people go to the scripture about his hair was like wood. And yeah, that's bread. that's revelation. Yeah. Really, yeah. Really mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's some, yeah. But they yeah. say that oh you black and you got mm -hmm. keep your hair like wood. Mm -hmm. yeah. nice. Wood is totally different from, yeah. from my hair. And wool would be white. Yes, there you go. See, wool so I don't white. know if a lot of people around with solid and, white and hair, young, like brass, you know. Y'all you know, know I've yeah. never met a brass foot uh -huh, guy. No. Yeah, you know, yeah. God bless you, my brother. Brother, very precious. Thank you, my brother. Yes, uh, thank you, my brother. It's a great study, by the way. Just want to read a few scriptures in uh, concerning the Jews and how they looked. Uh, mm -hmm. 1 Samuel 17, 42. It says, And when the Philistine looked about and saw David... <clears throat> He disdained him, for he was a youth. First Samuel seventeen forty two. Mm -hmm. He disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and a fair countenance. So, mm -hmm. the word ruddy is described as reddish, mm -hmm. uh, of complexion. Mm -hmm. You know, and we go we go to um, the scripture in uh, Lamentations four verse seven. It says, "Her Nazarites." were purer than snow, they were whiter than milk. Mm -hmm. They were okay. more ruddy in body than rubies. Their polishing was of sapphire. And so it's telling you actually how the Jews look like, their bodies look like. Okay. It says uh, they were whiter than milk, they were more ruddy in body uh, than rubies. So their body was like reddish, kind of like a white person. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when they when they're blush or where... I mean, they're embarrassed, you know, they, they get a little flush red in their face, you know, it's a description of ruddy. And then it says that they were whiter uh, than milk. So it's just a description of the Jews and Nazarites. And when you go to Revelation where it says uh, his hair is white as wool, it says the color of white as wool. It doesn't say, it doesn't say the texture as wool. It uses a color. Yeah. Like for example, if you if I if I say your hair is white as snow, yeah. it doesn't mean you got a snow cone on your head. Right. It means that the color of your hair is like the color of the snow. Mm -hmm. The same terminology was used with Solomon when they describe when she described his hair uh, black as a raven. Mm -hmm. Or I think he mentioned right. black as raven. Right. Now, it doesn't mean he had feathers on his head because <laughs> it said black as a raven. It just means that that's the color that his hair was. Right. So... You know, concerning the context, that's how it's describing how the Jews look, how David looked, the Nazarites looked. And so the exact details concerning, uh, you know, skin color we see in the Bible, how they look like. Uh, some of them may have been mixed, Amen. you know, but the idea is that the majority of them, it shows through the Bible what the majority of them look like. Yes. Now, eye color, that doesn't show eye color in the Bible about Jesus. Uh, what color I had so when it comes to you know flipping a coin or you know flipping four coins is what they're doing when it comes to uh, but as it says in Corinthians we no longer know him after the flesh Amen. so we know no, we no longer know him 
after that that way, you know. And that vision and revelation is not something, an image of him on earth. You know, that's just an image that's shown from Revelation. You know, I just, I want to close and I'll give it back to you. Concerning uh, Galatians 2 and Galatians 1 concerning Paul uh, as he's uh, going to Jerusalem in chapter 2, 14 years after I went up to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. I went up by Revelation, communicated unto them that gospel which I preached among the Gentiles. But he said that the gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, he said, but privately to them which are of reputation, uh, lest by any means I should run or had run uh, in vain. So here he's talking to uh, the leadership, uh, the apostles, when he's going to Jerusalem. Uh, he says in verse three, but neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in private to spot our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage mm -hmm. to whom we gave place by uh, subjection. No, not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But of these whom seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were and make it no matter to me, mm -hmm. God accepted no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Uh, but contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was to Peter. So when it comes to uh, him communicating with the apostles, as he says, preached among the Gentiles, but private to them which were of reputation. So when it comes to what happened right after, in verse 3, Titus was... With me, being a Greek, was was compelled to be circumcised. He was, uh, uh, and so when it comes to the Jews at this time, as he's talking to the, uh, to the brothers, uh, some men try to spy out the liberties that Paul had, the liberties Titus had, Barnabas had, and they were communicating concerning circumcision, mm -hmm. communicating because the Jews had a a real problem with circumcision right. at this time. And he's talking to the leadership. He says, lest I, I should run in, in vain. A similar terminology is in Philippians chapter 2, verse 16, where it mentions holding forth the word of life that I may re rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Mm -hmm. Yo, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with, uh, with you all. And so... When it comes to his running, you know, he ran for the, he was running and preaching the gospel among the Gentiles, anyone among the, the Jews, and he's talking to the leadership concerning of the same mind. So concerning the subject of circumcision, it's still a problem. That's right. He's dealing with it delicately. Uh, he's communicating with them to make sure that everybody's of the same mind with the apostles and what they teach. Uh, now, here's the thing about teaching it, though. Teaching it and living is two different things, as we mentioned in Galatians 2, when Peter, when a guy, Gentiles came in, he stood up mm -hmm. and then he separated himself from the Gentiles. That's, right. That's when Paul seen that and then he reacted and rebuked them, uh, rebuked them publicly. Mm -hmm. You know, so when it comes to the teaching, Peter understood the teaching, but the influence was so strong. Mm -hmm. See, he comes back 14 years later. Mm -hmm. See, he ain't been there 14 years. Mm -hmm. So he's coming back. And this is festering over here. He went by revelation. Mm -hmm. You know, Christ, let him, hey, go over there. And so as he's going over there, you know, he's talking to them. And then he's living around them. And then he sits back and watches this. And then he rebukes them. Mm -hmm. Because this influence has gone to Peter. has gone to... Uh, Barnabas also was swayed away when, the short time mm -hmm. that they were there. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that... Uh, when it comes to how we uh, run, how we walk in the faith, Paul was very wise in how he moved very carefully that he doesn't offend, very careful that he knows how to move the sword of, of Christ when he's teaching the gospel. And, you know, this is just a because he first had to deal with that first rebuttal. He in Galatians 2 is actually dealing with two different types of disputes, one with the Jews concerning, uh, you know, spying out. 
the liberty, uh, you know, concerning circumcision. Then he had to deal with Peter. On, so it's two different scenarios that he had to deal with. And so, um, but that's how we have to do. We have to watch in all things, and then we have to, you know, watch how we're gonna going to be able to remove the cancer spiritually from the congregation or the saint. You know, this needed. Amen. God bless you, preacher. My goodness, man. I tell you, brother Frias, God bless you, because that's a beautiful explanation of all those points. Uh, so we've understood and comprehended. That was, I'll take care of brother. God love you. Appreciate you. Thank you. We do understand now that there was some milky white skin. Remember I even mentioned, I said, we don't know what color. It is. <laughs> he could have been totally milky white. Because we just read that some Nazarite. Now, that's a group. Uh, we've got a lot of time between uh, the Jews and from David. David's already red looking. So, you know, uh, I think the understanding of that scripture helps us to understand. That's why we can't say what he looked like. So when someone tries to say they shouldn't have those pictures, well, they should maybe have had those pictures, depending on what group that you would have saw as general populace in his era. You know, is your hand up, sister? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what am I missing? Well, because one group is trying I mean, to. I adore him. I don't care if he was well, tiny, yeah, bright, or yeah. black as tar, yeah. or white as snow. I mean, who cares? Exactly. Well, see, the key is, as is Brother Friends pointed out, we. Well, because there's a group that's saying it's different, sister, and it matters to them. Because they're saying that he wasn't white, milky color. And I agree with saying he was as black as an Ethiopian, maybe darker. But the problem is, as you're saying... I mean, can't you it, love him whatever for his sacrifice? Yeah, well, can see, but that's because... Him? Yeah, yeah, but that's because, see, you understand we don't know him after the flesh anymore. You see, Brother Free has got a scripture for yeah. yeah see, I'll just read this yeah. real quick. <laughs> but uh, to them it matters. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16 says, Where, Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Mm -hmm. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now, henceforth, for know we him no more. So it's saying, from Amen. now, henceforth, we don't know him after the flesh anymore. God bless you, yeah, preacher. Bless Thank you. you. So, see, that's your text. But see... When the person's trying to tell you what he was white and they're trying to push that issue, what well, uh, the other person, because they're trying to say, okay, the people, the person you're talking about isn't the real Jesus. And so they're trying to base it upon skin color, but we're concerned about the writings that are about what he said. So, well, because we have to know if that did come from Jesus. Yeah, so we have to know, okay, who's the guy who said that stuff that's in the Bible? Okay, that guy came among his own, Jew, which could have been any color. And in addition to that, he went to Jerusalem, not Fifth Ward, not California. And so we want to identify, okay, who, where's this guy from? Why is that important? Because we don't know, is that really the Jesus? Because he told us there'll be many false Christ coming after me. So we've got, okay, well, we'll identify. And that's why John says what we wrote will help you believe in who Jesus is, John chapter 20. What we wrote, the things that we write down. And see, I want to read that to make sure we understand. We have to know who he is. And we have, because it, it could be any guy, say, well, this guy came out about 1700. No, we have to know what this writing here come from. And so that's why we want to know that uh, John 20 and 30 and many other signs, take care, sister. Truly did Jesus in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, and believe in you might have life through his name. So now these things are written. So what we find written in here, where he was at during a certain time, where was he at when Herod was in control? And which Herod was that? And where was he at? Uh, oh, okay, Jerusalem had not been destroyed yet because they're talking about walking through Jerusalem. Everything said, oh, he mentioned the temple still standing. Okay, so that's the Jesus. Now, this Jesus coming after the temple standing, that's not Jesus because he doesn't make any more appearances because Paul says, I'm the last one saw him. So Paul is saying that and the temple is still standing. Why is that important? Because when you get to talking to these groups who will infiltrate Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, 
uh, Baptist, Catholic, and Methodist in, infiltrate with these other gospels or these other so-called good newses that exist. But you and I have to have, okay, we got to have something we got to hold on to and lock down on because, wait a minute, these guys are saying this guy came here and said that. So it's important. So he's right now, where he was at? What did he do? What was going on when he died? What was going on when he was resurrected? Who was in control? Okay, we got uh, Herod already to marry his brother Philip's woman. So we got this thing down. We're looking at those pieces to say, okay, okay, that's why Peter says that same Jesus whom you crucified. See, not just the other hundreds of Joshua's that exist. That one is both Lord and Christ. So now we go, okay, now we got to focus. The guy crucified, named Jesus, stood before Apollo, tried to release him for a time. That's the one Peter's talking about. And so why is it important? Because that's the Messiah. Because we heard that. And so that's why John and Bricard is there. No, see, they, and the beauty of this, you see how Brother Freeze went through those scriptures and tagged, tagged, tag, that's because they're written. And so now he put a wall around any foolishness that would exist. And that's what we've got to do. And we all know that. We all know those things. And my question is, why are people today so insistent on... Because it's a different Jesus. He was black like me. Or he was you know black why? Because like that black Jesus has a different message, sister. That black Jesus, he has a different message. That black Jesus says, Joseph was my real daddy. My mom wasn't no virgin. She was a virgin before my daddy had sex with her. See, that's a different Jesus. He got a different thought. That the blacks will be in heaven and all the other races will be serving them. You want, you, so that's why he wants a black Jesus. That white Jesus has a little different flavor also. With, with different thoughts and scenarios. He takes in all the churches. He, he loves all the people the same. All the people, is, whether you're baptized or not, baptism is spiritual. So, yeah, those drawings of those Jesus, they come with a different message. And see, so that's the motivation. You're wondering, what's the motivation? Because he's a different Jesus. Second Corinthians 11 talks about that different Jesus, verses 2 through 4. And so... Because they're not of the saints, sister. That's why. Yeah. Yeah, I want, see, I want a different doctrine. Uh, as a certain race, I may not want to be added to the kingdom. So I'm going with that Jesus that doesn't add them. Yeah. And see, it's baffling you and I because we love the Lord, but it, it's no mystery as to what their motive is. They don't have another Jesus, and he's preaching the same thing. Nah. No. And he brings you a different spirit, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 4, and he brings you a Different gospel, different good news, different spirit. And see, the difference is because he's a different Jesus. Oh, yeah. And so they'll never be the same. So praise God. This has been wonderful. Man, God bless Brother Fritz. Excellent statements. Uh, good thoughts, Brother uh, Craig made earlier concerning that was one, one motivation pushing one idea one way. But, you know, the Bible is pointing out, you know, he could have been either way. But good explanation on the colors. It wasn't talking about, you know, textures of hair. I'm talking about colors. And so, you know, that's why I say I don't know of many people with solid white hair, young folks, solid curly white hair. You know what you're saying because, you know, that's an image that's in Revelation. So, you know, it's just you stop going, yeah, that's true. So it was, it was talking about color. So, you know, we have to understand that. And God will be with us and we will help each other along the way. We'll help those outside and inside the kingdom of God. And the Lord knows that. So we look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse uh, 3. The Bible says, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which all saw and see, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scripture, that he was buried, and the third day he rose again. Now, Brother William mentioned Mark 16 and verse 15, going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What I've just read, the good news about death, burial, and resurrection, because man wants to live again after death. He that believes and baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Acts 2.36, Peter preaches this for the first time as he leads them in this message. He tells, therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God had made the same Jesus whom crucified both Lord and Christ. When he heard this, he repented in the house of Peter, the rest of the apostles, men and brothers, shall we do? And Peter said, and repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise unto you here at church and all that are far even as men of the Lord our God shall call him in the words that he testified and thought, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that glad to receive his word were baptized and saying that they were added to about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, 
breaking of bread, and in prayers. Who adds to the church? Acts 2.47. Praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such should be saved. Acts chapter 8 has a real live Ethiopian, and he's not asking what color Jesus is. He wants to be saved. Acts 8.35, then Philip opened his mouth, began to say scripture, and preach unto him Jesus. As they went on their way, came a certain water. And the eunuch said, see, it's water. What the hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest all thy heart, thy man's. And I said, I believe that Jesus Christ is black. No, he says, the son of God. Isn't that beautiful? And he commanded the child to stand still. They went down both to the water, but Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Gee, I wonder what color the Holy Ghost has to be then. Whether well, it be Jews or Gentiles, but we'll be bond and free in that side, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Peter says it was Savior, first Peter 3:21, the like figure. Well, that's an even baptism. Does also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Out of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is going to heaven, angels, authorities, and powers. Be made subject unto him. Revelation 2:10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. She may be tried. Shall tribulation ten days be thy faith in the death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now the problem and understanding is this doesn't happen to everybody. You get in a prison, the devil puts you in, you just stuck. You never get in now. But to the righteous, he said, I will give you a crown of life if you be faithful unto death. And we believe that God will help us. We can look at the bottom of the title and see a little V-shaped object. You can touch it, open up other phone numbers. That will allow you to call if you want to be baptized. You have more questions about the message. Or if an individual is desirous to have counsel. And also, if you're here, if you desire for counsel, or if you desire to have prayer, or if you desire to be baptized, come now where together we stand and sing heaven's invitation. Oh, do not let the word depart.